Yo, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to UndergroundWellness.com. Today, we're talking about something very important and also incredibly misunderstood. We're talking about stomach acid and why it's actually good for you. There's like this war going on right now against stomach acid. It's been going on for a really long time, as a matter of fact. We've got things like Tums and Rolaids and acid blocking drugs that are sold over the counter that make tons of money for the pharmaceutical companies but at the same time most people who are using them actually don't need them and i will show you why so today we're going to go through some of the physiology of digestion and why hydrochloric acid or stomach acid is so important for making all of the things in there work number two we're going to talk about hypochlor Hydria or having not enough stomach acid and some of the problems that may uh, ensue. We're also going to talk about some solutions because I know you guys want to fix this the right way. So I will certainly point you in the right direction. So first and foremost, your digestive process actually starts before you eat food. It actually starts when you start thinking about food. When you smell food, your brain starts sending out signals saying, okay, food is on the way. Let's get this digestive process humming along. Let's increase the secretion of gastric juices. And let's also increase the production of hydrochloric acid or stomach acid. And so it's doing this anticipation or in anticipation of the meal that you're going to eat. So you eat that meal. And for this, this example, we'll say there's proteins, there's fats, and there's carbohydrates in that meal. So you eat that meal, you put it in your mouth, you chew it. Chewing is so incredibly important. Your teeth are actually part of your digestive system, responsible for breaking down that food into small little parts so your stomach can better break them down. So that food, when you swallow it, it goes down this tunnel called your esophagus, and that's gonna lead to your stomach. Now, as it goes through the esophagus, it's gonna bump into something. It's gonna bump into this valve, we'll call it, and it's called the L-E-S, or your lower esophageal sphincter, right? That's the border. That's the bridge between the esophagus and the nature of the stomach. And when I say nature of the stomach, I mean that acidic nature of the stomach. A lot of people ask this a really good question. They ask me, well, the stomach's made out of protein and the stomach acid is produced by the stomach and that stomach acid breaks down protein. So why doesn't the stomach acid just chew right through the stomach? And that's a really good question. It's because the stomach makes this substance that kind of acts like a force field that keeps the hydrochloric acid from breaking down the stomach cells and tissues. Now, the esophagus does not have that luxury. It does not have that same protection. So this valve right here is very important because it keeps the acidic food and the acid from going back back up to the esophagus where it can cause damage to the esophageal tissues and that causes heartburn. Now one thing you're going to learn in this video is that 90% of the time heartburn is not caused by too much stomach acid, it's actually caused by too little stomach acid. I'll show you why in just a bit. So food goes into the stomach, it gets that the stomach produces the hydrochloric acid and it's the production of the hydrochloric acid that's going to stimulate the production of an enzyme called pepsin. Now, pepsin is an enzyme that's important for the breakdown of protein. So the pepsin's working on the protein in your meal and other stuff's happening to break down some of the fats and break down a little bit of the carbohydrates, on and on. And two hours later, you're left with something that really doesn't look much like food anymore. It's like this nasty looking acidic soup that's called chyme, okay? So this chyme is sitting here in the stomach, hanging out, being slowly released into the small intestine. You know the small intestine is really important for uh, the absorption of the nutrients that comes from your food. Really, really important. Now, a couple of things are gonna happen in the small intestine that are really important. Actually, there's a whole bunch of things that happen in the small intestine. We're gonna talk about two. Number one is the release of bile. Now, your liver, is where bile is produced. Gallbladder is where the bile is stored. So when fat comes through, the gallbladder squeezes, bile comes out and it helps to emulsify the fats. Well, emulsification of fats, what are you talking about, Sean? Well, fats and water don't mix very well. And the small intestine is a very watery place. So that bile is gonna come out and take these fat particles and break them down into itty little, little bitty droplets so you can digest them better. Really important right there. Number two thing that happens that's critically important is the pancreas is going to produce digestive 
enzymes that help you break down proteins with their proteases or carbohydrates with amylase or pro I'm sorry fat with lipase and so these two functions here from the liver gallbladder as well as the pancreas help to further break down your food into little parts so you can absorb them better and get the nutrition that you need however your liver gallbladder and your pancreas they have like an on off switch right so we have to think about what's going to flip that switch. What initiates it? What initi initiates that flipping is the acidity of the chyme coming out of the stomach and going into the small intestines. So the chyme comes in and the liver and the gallbladder and the pancreas, they go, acid's here. Let's turn on and let's do our jobs, right? However, if there's not enough stomach acid, then the chyme is not sufficiently acidic to flip those switches so the liver gallbladder as well as the pancreas can do their jobs optimally. It's a domino effect and the domino effect starts right here in the stomach with the production of stomach acid. Hugely important. If this not work, isn't working, this isn't working. If this isn't working, this isn't working. It's like that statement, as above, so below. If what's above isn't working, what's below doesn't work either. Let's talk, talk more about things not working. Let's talk about hypochlorhydria or not enough stomach acid. Now, when you think about acid, you think about pH. And so in a normal stomach that makes sufficient stomach acid, the pH is going to be somewhere between one and three. In a stomach that doesn't produce enough stomach acid, the pH is going to be between four and seven. Now, it's a really good book that I'm reading right now, Digestive Health with Real Food. Everybody should read it. And she talks about a study. And this study found that when the stomach is of normal pH, a normal pH of 2.5, that stomach can break down 75% of the protein in beef. When the stomach uh, pH is too high because there's not enough acid there, let's say it's a five, then it can only break down 25% of the protein in beef. Now think about this. I used to be a, a, a consultant. I used to do health coaching. I used to work with some vegetarian clients and I would ask them, hey, why'd you go vegetarian? And they would say, well, whenever I ate meat, I just felt disgusting. I felt like that meat was just sitting in my stomach. Now, for a lot of them, as well as some of the people who weren't vegetarian who had this, this issue, it wasn't a problem with the meat. It was a problem with the production of the hydrochloric acid in the stomach. So we want to get to the root cause. We just don't want to say, hey, just pull all the meat out of the diet. There's too much nutrition there that, you can be, that you're going to be missing from now on. Let's fix the problem, which is the hydrochloric acid. Huge. So, protein. If you don't have enough hydrochloric acid, you can't initiate the production or sufficient production of pepsin, which means you can't break down your proteins properly. Proteins, as you know, break down when broken down properly into amino acids as well as, as, well as peptides. Now, if you've got insomnia, anxiety, depression, you're having a hard time building muscle even, uh, forgetfulness, brain fog issues, listen up. Because the protein, again, turns into amino acids. The amino acids are the precursors to neurotransmitters, which are very important for your brain health. For example, L-tryptophan is an amino acid that comes from protein. L-tryptophan is the precursor to serotonin, which is responsible for having like a really happy mood, being nice and calm and relaxed. Serotonin is the precursor to melatonin, which is a hormone responsible for um, proper sleep, getting you to, to sleep on time. But if you don't have your amino acids because you're not breaking down your proteins properly, you're going to have neurotransmitter deficiencies. And where does, those, where does that domino effect lead back to? It can lead back to not enough acid in the stomach. You're probably looking at my shirt. If you're a bodybuilder, you're probably snickering at my shirt right now. However, if you want to put on muscle, you need your proteins to break down properly in order to have the protein, the amino acids, the peptides to build up your muscle tissue. You don't have enough hydrochloric acid. This isn't going to happen. You're not going to build muscle. I feel like I'm a broken record right now. Let's talk about fat absorption. We kind of covered this already, but if the chyme coming out of the stomach is not sufficiently acidic, the liver gallbladder does not function properly, which means the bile cannot emulsify your fats, which also means that the pancreas can release the proper amount of lipases to break down fats. Now you've got fatty acid deficiencies. You've got deficiencies in your omega-6 fats. You've got problems with your fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. On and on, not a good thing because you need your fats. They're incredibly important. Next up, infections. Now, you eat food, 
And there may be parasites on your food. There may be bacteria on your food. Do you know what protects them or protects you from those things like taking over your body? The stomach acid in your stomach. See, when stomach acid is at the normal pH between one and three, parasites and bacteria, at least most of them, cannot live there for more than 15 minutes. However, if you have not enough stomach acid and your pH is too high, parasites and bacteria are just kind of hanging out. They're just chilling. They're passing through the, the stomach, getting into the small intestine, and they're just setting up shop. Now, I told you I was gonna enlighten you about why not enough stomach acid causes heartburn. This is where it's at right here. Now, bacteria are coming in through your food and through drinks and through other sources. It's not acidic enough to kill them. These bacteria are setting up shop in your small intestines. Now, what bacteria really like are carbohydrates. They like to feed on carbohydrates. So since you're not producing enough stomach acid, you're not producing enough amylase and these other enzymes that break down carbohydrates. So you have these incompletely broken down carbohydrates in here hanging out with bacteria that love to eat them. So the bacteria in there just eating, hanging out. Now you're getting bloated you're getting a lot of what's called uh, intra-abdominal pressure going on, all of this gas going on in here, which is pushing back through the stomach, which is now pushing through this valve and opening up that valve due to the pressure gradient and allowing acid and food contents to come back up into the esophagus, thus causing heartburn and damage to the tissues of the esophagus. Now let's talk about solutions. First and foremost, I'm not suggesting that anybody who was taking a doctor prescribed acid blocking drug go off that drug today because you watch this video that's something that you talk to your your doctor about or you talk to a functional medicine doctor about it did not come from me i am not suggesting that to you at all what i can suggest are a few things number one Betaine HCL, it's a supplement. You can get it in 1,000 milligram capsules from any local health food store. You take it with meals. It helps to increase your hydrochloric acid levels so you can not only break down your food properly, but also initiate this sequence of events that happens in order to have proper digestion and breakdown of your food. Start with one on day one. So just 1,000 milligram capsule, take it with meals that have protein and fats in them. If you're just eating a carbohydrate only meal, you probably don't need to take this supplement with that particular meal, but start with one, see how you feel. The next day do two with your meals, see how you feel, then do three with your meals and see what works best. You'll know when you've taken too much because you'll feel a little bit of heat in your chest. So if you take five and you feel heat in your chest, it means that you should back off to four and that'll work really well for you. Another one is bitters and specifically uh, one, one that you'll find is Swedish bitters. You take that about 15 minutes before your meals. It helps to initiate the proper production of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. A lot of people swear by that. Apple cider vinegar, uh, lemon juice as well as lime juice, two tablespoons. Mix it in about six ounces of water. Drink that about 15 minutes before meals. Again, that's gonna initiate a hydrochloric acid production. And then lastly, get tested for H. pylori. We've had videos about this and radio shows about it in the past. H. pylori is a bacterial infection that 50% of the world's population has. And what H. pylori actually does is it attacks the cells in the stomach that produce stomach acid. So if those cells are being attacked by the H. pylori, then of course you're going to have low stomach acid levels. And H. pylori can be some very serious stuff. Um, you can get stomach cancer because of H. pylori. And so be on the lookout for that. Get tested. Again, get with your medical doctor, get with a functional medicine practitioner, a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, somebody who knows what they're doing in order to help you figure this out because again it's that first domino that can cause all kind of not so good stuff from depression to anxiety to heartburn to bacterial overgrowth to parasitic infections to fat deficiencies to protein deficiencies to the inability to put on muscle the inability to go to sleep on and on and on and on stomach acid is not something to be at war with it is your friend as you learned in this video so pass this information along to your friends tell them to go to undergroundwellness.com and read my my blogs and check out the podcast as well. You can pick up the first chapter of my ebook, The Dark Side of Fat Loss at freedarksidechapter.com and go out and get this book, Digestive Health with Real Food by my friend Agley Jacob. I'm out of here. Peace.